For more insight into the Asiana crash, we're joined by Peter Goles, the former managing director of the National Transportation Safety Board. That's the U.S. agency in charge of the investigation. Thank you for being here. And Mr. Goals, based on your experience, are pilots too reliant on automated systems? Well, I think there's a great concern now, not only because of this accident, but there have been a couple of others in recent years in which perfectly good airplanes apparently have perplexed the crew, causing fatal accidents. So I think there is a growing concern about the pilots' interaction with these complex aircraft. I want to ask you about a recent uh, case. We have seen, as you mentioned, some cases where pilots have crashed because of uh, autopilot, so to speak. We have video of the Air France flight that yes, crashed indeed. 447 in June of 2009, killing everyone on board. And the investigation there questioned pilot training for what happened when the autopilot disengaged. How is it possible that four years later, after that crash, that we could have another instance where the pilot doesn't react in enough time? Well, I think it's, it's two things. One is, is that pilots are not getting enough time with hands-on flying in unusual circumstances. I mean, they, they need more time in simulators in which they're confronted with situations out of the ordinary. Secondly, there needs to be continuing work on what they call cockpit resource management. That's where each member of the cockpit crew feels that they can contribute in a tough situation. They can say, wait a minute, what are you looking at? Our speed has dropped 40 knots below. Who's watching that? And in this case, you could see that, that it was a failure of understanding the equipment, and secondly, a failure of cockpit resource management. You had three experienced pilots. No one was speaking up. The Asiana flight was an international flight from Seoul coming into the United States. And for our international audience, um, I guess I'd like you to explain what powers the U.S. government and the NTSB have to regulate and, in some cases, punish maybe international airlines for wrongdoing. Well, the, the NTSB doesn't punish anybody. They are not a regulatory body. They simply investigate to find out what happens. Then they make recommendations so that it doesn't happen again. And in this case, it's governed by international treaty. Uh, the Korean government, the Korean airlines, all participate fully in helping establish the factual record, what happened. Then the NTSB does the analysis, puts out a probable cause, probably not for another six or eight months, and then makes recommendations. But in terms of, of punishment or litigation, boy, that has got nothing to do with this investigation. I'd like to play you something from earlier today that the former chief pilot of Boeing uh, said that the type of plane that was uh, involved in this Asiana crash, and I'd like to get your response on the other end. Sure. We accept the fact that pilots, as all humans, make errors. We try to make errors that can be corrected and um, noticed. Now, he says automation should aid and not replace the pilot. Can pilot error ever been, be removed from flights? Well, you're dealing with human beings, so the answer is probably no. But it can be minimized, and automation ought to be something that contributes to the safety and doesn't confuse the pilots and something that the pilots don't overly rely on. And that's where I think today's hearing, particularly in the morning, you saw where the flight crew really wasn't fully cognizant of exactly what the automated flight system was doing. Some of them thought that the, that the throttle that controls the speed was going to increase while they were landing as their uh, speed dropped. It didn't. And uh, when, they, when they hit the seawall, they were going almost 40 knots slower than they should have. All right. Peter Goles, thank you so much for joining us and providing uh, your perspective. Thank you for having me.